The blade sliced through the moonless night, its edge glinting silver before plunging into yielding flesh. A muffled scream, a gurgle, then silence. Samantha Ray watched, paralyzed with horror, as the shadowed figure straightened over the body sprawled at his feet, wiping the knife clean on the corpse's shirt with a deliberate, almost tender motion. A shaky breath escaped her as the murderer turned, features still obscured under a dark hood. It couldn't be him. The man she... No. I... She wouldn't even think it. To contemplate the unthinkable, the forbidden, was to court madness. Backing away from the grisly scene, leaves crunching under her boots, she groped frantically for her phone. She had to call for backup. Had to report this, process the scene, catch the killer. Even if it shattered her already fractured heart. Her fingers brushed smooth plastic and she exhaled in relief, pulling the device from her pocket. The glow of the screen lit her pale, stricken face as she punched in the first digit. A dark chuckle froze her blood. She looked up slowly to meet eyes that had once gazed at her with breathless passion. Eyes now devoid of warmth, of humanity. Leering over the edge of a blade slick with blood. Oh, Samantha, he purred, stalking towards her. My brilliant, beautiful Samantha. I always knew it would end like this. Terror blended with agony as her finger fumbled for the last digit. But not quickly enough. The phone flew from her hand as he closed the distance, clattering against a gravestone. Samantha didn't even have time to scream before the blade flashed again, slamming her into unforgiving stone. Hot blood bloomed across her abdomen as he smiled down at her, a smile as cold and pitiless as the grave. We just couldn't escape our sins, could we, baby sister? He stroked her cheek with a gloved finger, tragically gentle. In this family, no one gets out alive. Blackness crashed over her, heavy and absolute. Her last thought before oblivion took her was that maybe, after all these years of running from her past, from her twisted birthright, maybe oblivion was a mercy. The staccato beep of a heart monitor roused Samantha from the abyss. She surfaced slowly, painfully, like a diver ascending from impossible depths. White. Duck. Everything was white. The sterile walls, the crisp sheets tangled around her legs, the gauzy curtain drifting lazily over the room's single window. Her eyes registered the details clinically, a detached cataloging honed by years on the force. Hospital? She was in a hospital. But why? Awareness crashed into her. Brutal and unrelenting. The moonlit cemetery. The hooded figure crouched over a mangled body. Steel and shadows. A familiar smile, and agony searing her gut. Liam, dot in. The name was a broken whisper on her dry, cracked lips. Her stepbrother. The man she. The man who had to kill her. Easy, detective. A gentle hand restrained her as she scrabbled weakly at the IV line snaking from her arm. You've been through quite an ordeal. Samantha turned her head to meet warm brown eyes in a kind, lined face. A petite black woman in pale green scrubs, her graying hair pulled back in a tidy bun. Her ID badge read Nurse Carter. How, how long? Samantha croaked. You've been with us for three days, Nurse Carter said softly. You lost a lot of blood, but you're a fighter. They didn't think you'd make it off the table, but I knew better. She patted Samantha's hand, her smile tinged with sympathy. The boys in blue will be wanting to take your statement now that you're awake. Should I tell them you're up for visitors? Three days. Samantha struggled to make sense of it. Three days since her world imploded on an innocuous Tuesday night, all her darkest fears made manifest in the sweep of a blade. The blade. She had to tell them. Even if the words scalded her tongue, even if they damned the man who'd once been her salvation, her secret solace. She had a duty. To the victim, to the truth. Even if it destroyed her. Yes, she whispered through numb lips. I'm ready. The officers were respectfully brisk as they took down her halting, pain-hazed recollections. Liam Hensley, her stepbrother, and a respected psychiatrist, 
attacking her in the cemetery after she stumbled on him, standing over a mutilated corpse. His unhinged ramblings about their sins and twisted family legacy. The glint of a wickedly serrated hunting knife as it arced towards her. It was like he was a different person, Samantha murmured, a tremor in her voice. His eyes. They were so cold. Empty. Officer Diaz, a grizzled veteran Samantha knew from her days as a rookie on the beat, frowned. You're certain it was your stepbrother? No chance of a misidentification? I know what I saw, Samantha replied sharply, a slash of pain in her gut underlining the words. It was Liam? Diaz and his baby-faced partner exchanged a loaded glance. Detective Ray? Liam Hensley has been in our custody since the night of your attack. We found him kneeling over you, covered in blood, knife in hand. He's refused to say a word except to ask for a lawyer. The world tilted under Samantha, sending her stomach into sickening freefall. They had him. He was locked away where he couldn't hurt anyone else, where he couldn't sway her with the dark magnetism that had drawn her in, an inexorable pull, since the day their parents married a decade ago. No. She wouldn't think about that, about the sordid secret that could unmake her if it ever saw the light of day. Liam was where he belonged. Even if the thought of him in a cage made her soul cry out in protest, dragging a deep, shuddering breath into lungs that suddenly felt too small, she met Diaz's gaze squarely. I want to see him. Diaz's brows shot up. I don't think that's a good idea, all things considered. I wasn't asking permission. Samantha pushed herself straighter against the pillows, ignoring the hot lance of agony in her midsection. If it's too soon for a formal interrogation, fine. But one way or another, I will see my stepbrother. Today? Doll? The officer blew out a heavy sigh, but she saw the acquiescence in his eyes. He knew her, knew her reputation for tenacity. She would walk out of this hospital and knock down the precinct doors if she had to. I'll see what I can do to arrange a visit. But I'm warning you, Ray. He leveled her with a stern glare. The man in that cell? He's not the man you knew. Not anymore. And Liam Hensley, her beloved tormentor, had ever been a man she knew at all. As the door clicked shut behind Diaz, leaving her alone with the beep of the monitors and the cruel echoes of memory, Samantha traced a finger over the bandage, swathing her stomach. The doctors had told her it would scar, a thick, ropey reminder of her brush with death at her stepbrother's hands. But the wounds Liam had left on her soul? Those would never heal. Not unless she confronted the festering darkness that had eaten away at the foundations of their lives, rotting them from the inside out. The darkness she alone knew the shape of, the acrid tang of in the back of her throat. Family secrets. Blood secrets. The kind that were only whispered in the dead of night, behind closed doors and drawn curtains. The kind that turned love cancerous, devouring everything in its path. With a leaden hand, Samantha reached for her phone on the bedside tray, scrolling through her contacts until she found the name that made her heart clench. Dad, D. But after the events of that nightmarish evening, could she even call Richard Hensley that anymore? She tapped out a text, fingers trembling. We need to talk. It's about Liam? Her thumb hovered over the send button, hesitating. Once she started down this twisted path, there would be no going back. But if she had any hope of unraveling the mystery of her stepbrother's unthinkable actions, of exercising the demons that had strung them together like two marionettes in a macabre dance, she had to go back to the beginning, back to the tangled roots of the family tree that had borne such poisoned fruit. Eyes falling shut, an unsteady exhale shivering past her lips, Samantha pressed send. The die was cast. And come hell or high water, she would see this through to its inevitable end. The halls of Raven's hollow penitentiary stretched before Samantha, cold and echoing. Fluorescent lights buzzed overhead, casting a sickly pall over the industrial gray walls. The clank of the guard's keys and the measured thud of their footsteps were the only sounds, an eerie counterpoint to the pounding of her heart. She shouldn't be here. Not two days after clawing her way back from death's precipice.
not to confront the man who had put her there, the man whose very existence was so entwined with her own, she no longer knew where he ended, and she began. But Samantha had never been one to shy away from the darkness. She had built her life, her career, on staring unflinchingly into the abyss, even when the abyss stared back with eyes the same haunting shade as her own. The guard stopped outside a nondescript door, his expression inscrutable. You sure about this, detective? He's been volatile. Samantha's chin lifted, a defiant tilt that belied the fear coiling in her gut. I'm sure. With a curt nod, the guard unlocked the door and stepped back. You've got ten minutes. I'll be right outside. Samantha crossed the threshold, the click of the latch behind her as loud as a gunshot in the confines of the barren room. And there, shackled to a bolted-down table. Hello, Samantha. A rasp, a ruin of the warm baritone that had whispered forbidden promises against her skin in the secret dark. I knew you'd come. Liam Dot. His raven hair hung lank and matted, a stark contrast to the sickly pallor of his skin. Lurid bruises modeled his high cheekbones, souvenirs of the struggle with the arresting officers. But it was his eyes that arrested her, froze the breath in her lungs. Those quicksilver eyes, once alight with wicked mischief, now gleamed with a feverish intensity she scarcely recognized. The eyes of a madman. Or a monster. Why? The question scraped past the thorns in her throat, guttural and raw diary. Why did you do it, Liam? A ghost of his rakish grin flickered across his face, there and gone like a trick of the light. Straight to the point, as always. That's what I always loved about you, Sammy. No bullshit. No pretense. He leaned forward, the clink of the chains a mocking reminder of how far they'd fallen. Just two sinners in the dark. Damn the consequences. Samantha's fingers curled into fists at her sides, nails biting into her palms. What we, what happened between us that has nothing to do with this? With what you did to that poor woman in the cemetery? Liam's head canted to the side, a grotesque mimicry of the playful gesture she knew so well. Doesn't it? Oh, my sweet, naive Sammy. It has everything to do with it. With us. With the sickness that's rotted the Hensley family from the inside out for generations. Bailey scolded the back of her throat as his words sank in, insidious and corrosive. The sickness. The unnatural pull that had drawn them together, two galaxies colliding in a spectacular burst of mutually assured destruction. The woman in the cemetery, she forced out through stiff lips. Who was she? Why did you... Why? Liam's gaze turned distant, haunted. Annabelle Redfern Tointal, age 26. A nurse at Raven's Hollow General. His voice took on a sing-song cadence, an eerie recitation. Pretty little thing. All peaches and cream skin and honey gold curls. And a doting fiancé who worships the ground she walks on. Samantha's breath caught. Annabelle. You knew her. Oh, yes. Liam purred. I knew her. Intimately. She was my patient, you see. Poor broken bird pouring out all her secrets on my couch. All her hopes, her fears, her sins. He met Samantha's horrified stare, a smile playing at the corners of his mouth. And you and I both know, dear stepsister, that sins have a way of catching up to you. One way or another, the piper must be paid. Revulsion churned in Samantha's stomach, mingling with an aching sorrow for the bright-eyed girl whose only crime was trusting the wrong man. You took an oath, Liam. To do no harm. She was your patient, for God's sake. God. Liam scoffed. There is no God in this family, Samantha. Only the devil and the bargains we make to keep him at bay. He rattled his chains, a jarring clatter in the charged stillness. I did what I had to do. What I was born to do. Just like dear old dad. Ice slithered down Samantha's spine. Their father. The man whose arrival in her life a decade ago had set them all on this collision course with destiny, whose charm and largesse masked a rot so deep and pervasive it had choked the very life from her fragile, troubled mother. 
leaving Samantha alone in a nest of vipers. Easy prey for a budding psychopath with angel's eyes and a demon's heart. Dad. The word was a broken glass shard on her tongue. He's part of this, isn't he? Part of whatever twisted game you're playing. Liam's grin stretched wide, a death's head rictus. Oh, Sammy, don't you see? He's the game, and we're all just pawns on his board, dancing to his tune like the good little marionettes we are. The world tilted, sending Samantha staggering back a step. Her mind reeled as the implications crashed over her in a freezing tide. All this time, all these years, had it all been a lie. A carefully constructed facade, concealing something far darker, far more insidious than she ever could have imagined. But why? She whispered, numb and scraped raw all at once. Why now? Why this? Liam shrugged, a fluid ripple of still powerful shoulders beneath the prison orange. Because it's time, Samantha. Time for the sins of the father to be visited upon the children. Time for the Hensley legacy to come full circle. His eyes glittered like chips of flint. Starting with us. The prodigal daughter and the sacrificial son. B. The last of the bloodline. Samantha shook her head slowly, denial and dread, a leaden weight in her lungs. No, no. I won't be a part of this. I won't let you drag me down with you. Oh, but you already are. Liam leaned back, satisfaction curling his lips. You have been since the moment you fell into my arms, all trembling innocence and hungry eyes, since you let me peel back those prim good girl layers and feast on the darkness beneath. Shame scorched through her, a wildfire that left nothing but ash and regret in its wake. Because he was right. As much as she had tried to deny it, to lock it away in the deepest recesses of her psyche. She was tainted, damaged, a fitting consort for the beast masquerading as a man before her. It's in your blood, Sammy. Liam's voice dropped to a hypnotic purr, insidious as a lullaby. In your very bones. The urge to destroy, to consume, to take what you want, consequences be damned. Just like me. Just like Dad. No. Whoa. The denial was ragged, torn from a throat gone tight with unshed tears. I'm not like you. I'll never be like you. We'll see. Something flickered in Liam's eyes, gone too quick to decipher. Regret? Sorrow? She had no chance to analyze it further, because suddenly he was surging to his feet, chains snapping taut as he lunged across the table. Samantha stumbled back with a startled cry, but not before he caught her wrist in a crushing grip, yanking her in until scant inches separated them. Tick tock, Sammy, he whispered against her ear, hot breath gusting over the sensitive skin. The clock's running out, and when the final bell tolls, you'd best be standing on the right side of the line. A razor-edged grin, a mocking kiss pressed to her racing pulse. See you on the other side, stepsister mine. And with that, he shoved her away, sending her staggering into the unforgiving steel of the door. Shaking, scarcely daring to breathe, Samantha fumbled for the knob, the screech of the hinges like a banshee's wail in her ears. She couldn't get out of there fast enough, away from the cloying weight of secrets and sins long buried. But even as she fled, Liam's parting words echoed in her head, an insidious loop she couldn't shake. Samantha's hands shook as she fumbled her key into the lock of her brownstone, the scrape of metal on metal obscenely loud in the hushed stillness of the night. She shouldered the door open, staggering across the threshold like a sleepwalker jolted awake. The familiar scent of leather-bound books and vanilla candles enveloped her, but for once, it brought no comfort. Not when the very foundations of her world had been ripped out from under her, leaving her anchorless, adrift in a sea of ugly truths and shattered illusions. Liam's words chased themselves in circles inside her skull, a mocking echo she couldn't escape. Sins of the father. Tick-tock, Sammy. The other side. What did it all mean? What fresh hell awaited her at the end of this twisted rabbit hole? A sudden knock at the door made her jump, heart slamming against her ribs. She spun, hand instinctively going to the gun at her hip. 
but it wasn't the specter of her dark past come calling, but the embodiment of her present. Jesus, Sam, you look like you've seen a ghost. Detective Jake Callahan shouldered his way into her apartment, crystalline blue eyes raking over her ashen face, the tremor in her hands. What the hell happened? I've been calling you for hours. Samantha shook her head, throat working convulsively around the jagged lump of secrets she couldn't voice. I... I went to see Liam. Jake's jaw clenched, a muscle ticking in his clean-shaven cheek. God damn it, Samantha. You should have told me. I would have gone with you, had your back. And that's exactly why I didn't. She cut him off, an edge of desperation sharpening her words. Jake, there are things about my family, about me, that you don't know. Things I can't. She broke off, dragging a hand through her hair, the silken strands snarling around her fingers. How could she even begin to explain the labyrinth of depravity that was the Hensley legacy? The festering wounds that had poisoned her very bloodline. Twisting love into something rank and rotting? Jake's expression softened, those two keen eyes seeing far too much. He crossed to her in two long strides, calloused hands coming up to frame her face with a gentleness that made her want to weep. Hey, look at me, Sam Ut. Helpless to resist the rough velvet of his voice, the steady anchor of his touch, she met his gaze. In the fathomless blue, she saw everything she was terrified to confront. Concern. Compassion. The stirrings of something deeper, richer. Something she had no right to want, tainted as she was by the sins of her forefathers. I know you, Samantha Ray. Jake's thumb stroked over her cheekbones, the rasp of his skin against hers sending liquid heat shuddering through her veins. I've seen your heart, your strength. Whatever demons you're wrestling, we can face them together. Partners, remember? Oh, how she wanted to sink into the promise of his words, his touch. To let him be her harbor, her lighthouse in the storm. But she couldn't. Not now, now. Not when the darkness nipping at her heels threatened to swallow her whole and drag him down with her. Jake, I... Her voice cracked, splintered. I can't. I'm not. I'm not what you think I am. Gently but firmly, she pulled away from his touch, wrapping her arms around herself, as if she could physically hold in the howling void where her heart used to be. You need to go. Huh. Please. Hurt flickered across Jake's handsome face, quickly subsumed by grim resolve. I'm not going anywhere, Sam. Not until you talk to me. We're in this together, whether you like it or not. Frustration and fear boiled over sharpening Samantha's voice to a razor's edge. Damn it, Jake, this isn't one of our cases. This is my life, my family. And trust me when I say you don't want to be a part of it. She spun away, a bitter laugh scraping past the thorns in her throat. God knows I don't. Silence, thick and charged, stretched between them. Samantha squeezed her eyes shut, willing Jake to leave, to walk away before she shattered completely before he saw the ugliness, the rot that lurked beneath the cool, composed mask she showed the world. You're right. Jake's quiet words shattered the brittle hush. This isn't a case. It's so much more than that. The floorboards creaked as he crossed to her, strong hands settling on her shoulders, turning her to face him. His eyes burned into hers, brilliant blue and fierce with conviction. It's your life, Samantha. Your truth. And no matter how dark, how painful that truth might be, I want to be a part of it. A part of you. His palm cupped her cheek, work roughened skin searing her to the bone. I love you, Sam. All of you. And there's nothing, nothing, that could change that. The words hit Samantha like a bolt of lightning shattering her defenses, her carefully constructed walls, in one devastating strike. A sob hitched in her chest, hot tears spilling down her cheeks as she stared at Jake, at this man who had somehow scaled her ramparts and laid siege to her weary, wary heart. You can't, she whispered brokenly. You can't love me, Jake. I'm, I'm poison. Everything I touch, everyone I care about, 
They end up broken. Destroyed. Her nails bit into her palms, the sting a welcome counterpoint to the anguish carving her hollow. Just look at Liam. My own stepbrother, twisted into a monster by the sickness in our blood. What chance do I have of escaping that fate? Of not dragging you down with me? Every chance. Jake's arms banded around her, strong and steady as the mountains. Because you, Samantha Ray, are the most resilient, most incorruptible person I've ever known. If anyone can break the cycle can choose the light, it's you. He pressed his forehead to hers, their breath mingling in the scant space between them. But you don't have to do it alone. Let me stand with you, Sam. Let me fight for you, even when you can't fight for yourself. Samantha's heart swelled to bursting, a tsunami of love and longing and soul-deep gratitude crashing through her. God, how had she ever thought she could resist this man, this feeling? He was her true north, her guiding star. With him by her side, she felt strong enough to slay dragons, or the demons of her past. Together, she whispered against his lips, a vow and a prayer all at once. Jake's mouth curved in a soft, deep smile as he closed the last breath of distance between them. Together. And as he kissed her, slow and sweet and achingly tender, Samantha let herself believe, for one shining moment, that maybe fairy tales could come true after all. That even monsters could find redemption, in the arms of steadfast love. The feeling lasted for the space of a heartbeat, and then the shrill ring of her cell phone shattered the spell. Dread, cold and slick as oil, slithered down Samantha's spine as she pulled back from Jake's embrace, fumbling the device from her jacket pocket. The number on the screen was one she knew all too well, and had hoped never to see again. Dad, Dottie. The word tasted like ashes on her tongue. Hello, Samantha. Richard Hensley's cultured baritone, smooth as aged scotch, rolled over her like a noxious wave. It's time we had a little chat about your brother, and the rather inconvenient mess he's made of things. A chill ghosted over Samantha's skin, pebbling her flesh with goosebumps. So Liam had been right. Their father was the spider at the center of this web, pulling all their strings. But to what end? I've sent a car for you. Richard's tone brooked no argument. It should be arriving at your quaint little hovel any moment now. Don't keep me waiting, daughter mine. We have much to discuss. The line went dead, the ominous click reverberating like a gunshot in Samantha's ear. She lowered the phone slowly, hand shaking to meet Jake's questioning stare. I have to go, she said numbly. My father, he wants to see me. Jake's brow furrowed, a furrow of unease marring his forehead. Now? Sam, are you sure that's a good idea? With everything that's happened, I don't have a choice. She cut him off, urgent and brittle. You heard Liam. This all leads back to our father, to some kind of twisted family legacy. If I want answers, if I want to put an end to this once and for all, I have to confront the source. She swallowed hard, resolve crystallizing in her gut like a shard of ice. I have to go back to where it all began. Back, home. She spat the word like venom, eyes falling shut against the onslaught of memories. The looming gothic monstrosity that had been both haven and crucible. The oppressive weight of secrets and shadows. The cloying scent of her mother's perfume, the pained tightness around her father's eyes. And through it all, threading like poison, with his wicked smile and knowing eyes, and hands that mapped her body like he had a right to her, blood and bone and rotten, aching soul. No, I... She couldn't let the past shackle her, not now. Not when she finally had a chance to break free, to choose her own path, her own future. A future that could include the steadfast, stubborn man who even now was looking at her like he would walk through fire for her or march into hell itself to keep her demons at bay. Jake? She reached for him, fingers curling into the fabric of his shirt, anchoring herself to his strength. I need you to promise me something. His gaze searched her face, intent and unwavering. Anything. If I'm not back in 24 hours. Her throat closed, choking off the words. She forced them out anyway, 
needing him to understand. To let her go, even if it killed them both. If I'm not back, I need you to leave this alone. To let it go, and never look back. Jake's eyes flashed, mutiny in every line of his rugged face. Sam, no. I won't abandon you to those wolves. I can't just... Please, Jake. Desperation clawed at her chest, hot and wild. I can't, I can't risk you getting caught in the crossfire. Not for this. Not for me. Her voice dropped to a ragged whisper, stripped bare and raw as an open wound. I need you safe. Even if, even if I'm not. For a long, stretched moment, Jake just stared at her, blue eyes fathomless with emotions she dared not name. Then, with a shuddering exhale, he drew her into the circle of his arms, banding tight around her like he could shield her from the world with the sheer force of his love. Twenty-four hours. He rasped against her hair, the words heavy with promise and dread in equal measure. One second longer, and I'm coming for you, Samantha Ray. Heaven and hell be damned. Samantha's eyes drifted shut, breathing in the scent of him, the solid strength. If this was to be their last embrace, their final goodbye, she wanted to memorize every detail, to brand it on her heart, a talisman against the darkness to come. I love you, she whispered, a benediction and a prayer. No matter what happens, remember that. Then before she could lose her nerve, before she could succumb to the temptation of his arms and his love and the promise of a normal life, she pulled away. One last long look, committing his beloved face to memory. One last squeeze of their joined hands. And then she was gone, striding out into the velvet dark, and whatever grim destiny awaited her, leaving her heart, her hope, in the hands of the man she prayed would be her salvation. The wrought iron gates of Hensley Manor loomed before Samantha, a gaping maw ready to devour her whole. She shivered, pulling her coat tighter around herself, as she stepped out of the sleek black town car. The driver, a faceless shadow, melted back into the vehicle and sped away, leaving her alone in the gravel drive. Alone, but for the weight of a thousand watching eyes, lurking in every darkened window and rustling tree branch. Stealing her spine, Samantha forced her leaden feet to carry her forward, up the sweep of stone steps to the massive oak doors. Before she could reach for the tarnished brass knocker, they swung open, spilling golden light and the scent of beeswax candles into the night. Miss Samantha Darin. Carva, the ancient butler who had been a fixture of the manor since her earliest memories, bowed his silvered head. Your father is expecting you in the study. Of course he was. Richard Hensley was not a man accustomed to being kept waiting. Samantha inclined her head in acknowledgement, stepping over the threshold into the marbled foyer. The instant the doors thudded shut behind her, she felt it, the oppressive weight of the past, of secrets and sins long buried, pressing down on her like a physical force. Every instinct screamed at her to run, to flee this mausoleum of bitter memories and twisted legacies before it could suck her back into its poisoned embrace. But she couldn't. Not now. Not when the answers she so desperately needed lay in the belly of the beast. Squaring her shoulders, Samantha made her way down the familiar hallways, her footsteps echoing hollowly off the priceless Persian rugs and dark, gleaming hardwood. Everywhere she looked, ghosts rose up to greet her. There, the antique settee where she used to curl up with a book, losing herself in stories to escape the suffocating reality of her gilded cage. There, the oil portrait of her mother, forever frozen in pained, faded beauty, eyes haunted above a strained smile. And there, the narrow staircase tucked behind a velvet drape, leading up to the forbidden wing where Liam had claimed her. Body and damned, broken soul with whispered poisons and fevered touches that still branded her flesh. No, no. She couldn't let the past snare her, not now. Ripping her gaze away from the specters of yesteryear, Samantha forged ahead until she stood before the imposing mahogany door of her father's study. The brass nameplate, stark against the rich wood grain, seemed to mock her, 
Richard Hensley, Esquire. As if the man needed any reminder of his own power, his own black-hearted dominion. Breathing deep, Samantha knocked once, the sound as loud as a gunshot in the waiting hush. Her father's voice, smooth as aged whiskey, bade her enter. She stepped inside, senses immediately assaulted by the scents of leather and tobacco, the snap and crackle of flames in the massive stone fireplace. And there, silhouetted against the leaping orange glow, the broad-shouldered figure of Richard Hensley himself, hands clasped behind his back as he surveyed his prodigal daughter. Samantha Dot. He turned to face her fully, steel-gray eyes glinting in the firelight. So good of you to come. As if she'd had a choice. Samantha swallowed back the bitter retort, dipping her head in a stiff nod. You said we needed to talk. About Liam Dot Owl. Ah, yes. Your brother? Richard crossed to the bar cart in the corner, pouring two fingers of amber liquid into a cut crystal tumbler. He's made quite a mess of things, hasn't he? Samantha's jaw clenched, fingers curling into fists at her sides. He's a murderer. A monster. Now, now. Richard chided, sipping his drink. Is that any way to talk about family? Family? The word tasted like ashes on Samantha's tongue. Is that what you call the sick, twisted games you've been playing? The way you've pitted us against each other, poisoned our minds, our hearts, raw. I gave you everything. Richard snarled, composure shattering like the crystal glass he hurled into the fireplace. Samantha flinched as it exploded, shards tinkling musically amidst the flames. Status, wealth, power. And this is how you repay me. By turning you back on your own blood, your birthright? What birthright? Samantha demanded, standing her ground even as her heart raced like a wounded rabbit's. The right to be your little pawns, dancing on your strings, to carry on the cycle of manipulation and abuse? Richard's lips curled in a sneer. Don't be so dramatic, Samantha. We're Hensleys. Extraordinary people, burdened with extraordinary purpose. If you're too weak to embrace your destiny, your duty to this family, then perhaps you're not the woman I thought you were after all. Anger, hot and bright as a lit fuse, sparked in Samantha's chest. No, uh, I'm not the woman you thought I was. The woman you tried to mold me into. She took a step forward, pinning her father with a hard, unflinching stare. I'm Samantha Ray. Detective. Surviva. And I won't let you pull my strings anymore. For a long, stretched moment, Richard simply stared at her, an unreadable expression on his patrician face. Then, to her shock, he began to laugh, a low, dark chuckle that built to a full-throated roar, head thrown back in malicious mirth. Oh, my dear, defiant girl, he said at last, wiping his eyes. You stupid, stubborn creature. You think you can escape this? Escape me? He shook his head, closing the distance between them in three long strides. You can't escape your blood, Samantha. Your legacy. It's carved into your very bones. The darkest chambers of your heart. His hand shot out, cold fingers gripping her jaw, forcing her to meet his gaze. In the silver depths, she saw madness and the inky tendrils of something far more terrifying. Liam was just the beginning, Richard hissed, spittle flecking his lips. The first of a glorious dynasty, hand chosen by the gods themselves. And you, my darling daughter. His nails dug into her skin, hard enough to draw blood. You were to be its dark queen. The unholy consort to your brother king, bound by the scarlet chains of sin. Horror, cold and viscous, slithered down Samantha's spine. Dear God, it was worse than she could have ever imagined. This wasn't just a legacy of abuse and manipulation, but of true, bone-deep evil. An evil her father believed was their birthright, their twisted destiny. You're insane, she whispered, wrenching her face from his grasp. Completely, utterly insane. 
I won't be a part of this sick delusion. Not now, not ever. She spun on her heel, moving towards the door on feet that felt like lead, heart like a wild drum in her ears. She had to get out of here, had to warn someone, anyone. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Her father's voice, cold as a dagger's kiss, froze her in her tracks. Slowly, dreadfully, she turned back to face him. He was smiling, a thin slash of lips that held no mirth, no humanity. In his hand, he held a small remote, thumb poised over a red button. One press of this button, he said softly, and your precious Detective Callahan goes up in flames, along with that quaint little brownstone you call home. Ice flooded Samantha's veins, chilling her to the marrow. Jake, God, no. Not him. You're bluffing, she said through stiff lips, praying with every fiber of her being it was true. You couldn't have. Couldn't I? Richard arched a brow. I've been watching you for months, my dear. I know every move you make. Every person you care for. His smile widened, sharp and vulpine. And just how far you'll go to protect them. Dread settled like a stone in Samantha's gut. He had her. Hook, line, and sinker. There was nothing she wouldn't do, no depth she wouldn't sink to, to keep Jake safe. To keep the man she loved out of the crosshairs of her father's madness. Even if it meant sacrificing her very soul. What do you want? She asked hoarsely, defeated. Richard's eyes glittered with triumph. You, Samantha back where you belong, by my side and your brother's, embracing your true nature, your glorious purpose. He extended a hand, palm up, an invitation, and a sentence. Take your rightful place, my dark queen, and I'll let your precious detective live. Samantha closed her eyes, anguish a living thing inside her chest. It was an impossible choice. Her freedom, her very self, or Jake's life, the man who had seen the best in her, even when she couldn't see it herself, the man who, with his steadfast love and stubborn faith, had given her something to fight for, something to believe in. In the end, it was no choice at all. Eyes flashing open, Samantha lifted her chin, a curious calm settling over her, the calm of the damned staring down the mouth of hell itself and accepting her fate. No. The word rang out like a gunshot, pure and final. Richard blinked, nonplussed. I beg your pardon? I said no. Samantha took a step forward, then another, until they were nose to nose. I won't be your puppet, your perverted fantasy. Not anymore. She plucked the remote from his slack fingers, holding it aloft like a talisman. This ends now. The cycle? The sins of the father? All of it. With a flick of her thumb, she pressed the button. Uxtown Jake's brownstone exploded in a rain of fire and rubble, the blast shaking the very foundations of the city. And with it, the chains that had bound her for so long. The chains of fear, of shame, of twisted duty. She was free. Come what may, she was finally, blessedly free. Richard stared at her. Shock and rage warring on his aristocratic features. You, you've ruined everything. Destroyed our dynasty, our destiny? No. Samantha cut him off, voice ringing with conviction. I've saved us. Saved myself. And I won't let you take that from me. Not again. Raising the remote high, she brought it down on the edge of the massive oak desk. Once, twice. Three times until it shattered, pieces raining down like hellish confetti. Richard roared, lunging for her in a blur of expensive wool and crazed fury. But Samantha was ready. Ducking beneath his grasping hands, she seized the heavy marble paperweight from the desk and brought it down on her father's skull with a sickening crack. He crumpled, a marionette with cut strings, blood pooling crimson and vivid against the Aubusson rug. For a long moment, Samantha simply stood there, chest heaving, staring down at the monster who had haunted her life, her very soul. 
the monster who in the end was just a man. A small, pathetic man, undone by his own hubris. A hysterical laugh bubbled up her throat, past her lips. She clapped a hand over her mouth, shoulders shaking with the force of it. She was free. Free of him, of Liam, of the poison that had rotted the Hensley line for generations. But at what cost? Jake. Oh, God, Jake. Tears burned her eyes, grief a cleaving knife in her heart. He was gone. The man who had loved her, truly and deeply, reduced to ashes and memory. Because of her. Because of her cursed blood, her damned destiny. Knees giving way, Samantha sank to the floor, uncaring of the blood soaking through her jeans. Sobs racked her body, tearing through her like wild animals. She had won her freedom, but lost everything that mattered. What was she supposed to do now? Where'd she go from here, alone and shattered and stained forever with the sins of her father? Dimly, through the haze of anguish, she heard the wail of sirens. The thud of footsteps pounding up the drive. The slam of the front door and a blessedly familiar voice shouting her name. Samantha. Samantha. No, Dial. It couldn't be. Hard in her throat, hardly daring to breathe, Samantha struggled to her feet, staggered to the study door and wrenched it open. To see Jake, soot-streaked and wild-eyed, racing towards her. Alive. Impossibly, miraculously alive. Jake. Duh. The name tore from her chest on a ragged sob as she threw herself into his arms, crushing him to her with every ounce of her strength. Oh, I thought. Shh. I've got you. He buried his face in her hair, rocking her as violent shudders racked her frame. I've got you, sweetheart. I'm here. I'll always be here. Samantha clung to him, fingernails digging into his back as if she could anchor him to her, to this moment. But the brownstone. I saw it explode. I know. Jake pulled back just enough to cup her face in his broad palms, thumbs sweeping away the tears coursing down her cheeks. But I wasn't there. I left, just like you asked. Went to the precinct to put a bolo out on you. His voice roughened, eyes burning into hers. Told you I'd come for you, Hensley. Not even hell itself could keep me away. A laugh, watery and weak but real, escaped Samantha's lips. She pressed her forehead to his, basking in the solid reality of him. Her rock, her guiding light. The man who had crossed heaven and earth to bring her home. It's over, she whispered, hardly daring to believe it. It's finally over. Yeah, baby. It's in a towel. Jake pressed a fierce, sweet kiss to her mouth, sealing the words, the promise. You're free. We both are. Free. Oh? The word echoed through Samantha like a prayer, a revelation. Free to live, to love, without the shackles of the past. Free to build a future, a family, untainted by the poison of her blood. A future that started right here, right now, in the arms of the man who had saved her, in every way a person could be saved. The road ahead wouldn't be easy. There would be questions, recriminations. The long, painful process of unraveling the tangled web her father had woven. Of facing the demons, within and without. But with Jake by her side, his love her sword and shield, she could face anything. Even the darkest shadows of her own shattered soul. Lifting her head, Samantha met his eyes, a smile trembling on her lips. A smile of hope, of joy, of hard-won peace. Take me home, detective. The end. D.